Hello everyone, I hope you're all doing beautifully well. So today we're looking at the SA19 Tunguska again. Yes, I know we have to keep looking at it, but I, you know, it's just how it is. So, uh, there's a lot of ambiguity. I'm, I'm still getting told off on the YouTube because I'm calling it a sackloss weapon, okay? It's, I'm saying it's got primary sackloss guided missiles. And people are saying, no, no, Cap, it's radar guided, it's radar guided. And um, so I have to correct this misinformation. So, first of all, let's have a look at the Tunguska uh, spectators. In fact, I should make a disclaimer, first of all. Uh, what I'm talking about is, I'm saying it's Sackloss primary guidance for the missiles on DCS. I'm not saying it's Sackloss in real life, and it, it might be, it might not. I don't know. I've never controlled a real SA-19 in real life. I couldn't tell you. I can only see, you know, what I see on the internet, and really what's important to me, which is what's on DCS at the moment, okay? So I'm going to prove to you now that it's, I mean, I know, obviously, I fought against this thing a hundred times, I got shot down a hundred times. I can tell you right now, it's not radar-guided missiles. So let's have an ever so quick look here, because it's just interesting anyway. This is a search radar. It's a spinning antenna. It sends a B-sweep of radiation around a about uh, 0.5 hertz, so it, it covers a 360 in two seconds. And that B sweep, when I get in my F-15, is going to hit me. It's going to paint my aircraft with radiation about about once every half a second. Sorry, once every two seconds. 0.5 hertz. What that's going to do is give me give this Tunguska a rough idea of where my aircraft is. That's what a search radar does. That search radar cannot guide weapons at 0.0 at 0.5 hertz. Is not enough information, update information, refresh rate to guide a missile. It could guide a missile maybe within a mile of me, but that's about it. Okay. Then we got this guy here. This is a track antenna. So this is for a, this is for a separate track radar. So that searches that tracks. Now track radar works more like 10 hertz, 10 to 20 hertz. So it's scanning kind of left and right, over a very small field. So this B-sweep for the search radar goes around and round and round, 360 degrees. This track radar scans a tiny corridor of where it knows we are from the search radar and goes ba 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 like that. A little B-sweep that goes left and right. Uh, up and down, it has about one degree, maybe two degrees of kind of elevation. And because its refresh rate is 10, 20 hertz, ba 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 like that, it can gives enough information to guide a weapon. And we can hear when it's tracking us and when it's searching for us in our F-15, we can hear that radar refresh rate, that B-sweep refresh rate. So we can tell you when it's tracking and when it's not tracking. And what we're going to find is we're going to fly towards this guy. We will be able to hear the search radar, but we'll never hear the track radar. And that's because it won't use the track radar. And that's because in DCS, it does not ever use the track radar for firing missiles. It only uses its sack loss. It's semi-automatic command line of sight which we talked about during the rapier video it's an optical only sight and it does not use the radar track again in real life then the doctor may be different maybe dcfs have got it wrong i don't know i can't tell you that um i don't know any sa19 operators not yet at least anyway so let's go and put all this into practice and show you shall we so um i'm going to select my dude ping all right so listen very carefully so the first thing is we've got a nail. So that guy is now nailing us. That's, uh, that's the sign for the S... I keep forgetting why it's an S6, but that's an SA-19 Tunguska, okay? Something to do with the search radar, similar to an SA-6, something like that, but it doesn't matter. Now listen to the background for the paint. It'll be like tick, tick, tick. You hear that? That there, the chirp. So it's about 0.5 hertz at the moment, every two seconds. That's that B-sweep scanning round... like that. If it was using a track radar, it would be ba 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 tick 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 like that. 10 to 20 hertz. And we're going to be getting close and it's probably going to fire at us pretty soon. 8 miles. Oh, there's a missile. You hear? It's not using a track radar. Its track radar is turned off at the moment. It's guiding with a sack loss, which is an optical track only. So if we go back to the vehicle there, it's got a little, well, I don't know, you go a bit beyond me really, but a bit of, like a little TV camera, something like that. It's actively, optically got a little crosshair that is pointing on my aircraft. It zooms in, finds my aircraft, puts the crosshair on my aircraft, radio link to the missile, wherever it is, 
uh, which guides it to the crosshair intercept path. In fact, look, I'm right there, look. And the beauty of this system is that I don't get a track warning or a missile launch warning. And that's what the whole idea, as far as I'm aware, of the Tunguska was. You know, it's here to take down A-10Cs and stuff like that. So it can shoot them without giving them a warning. It's fired at them. It's the beauty of Sackloss. It has no real need to do a, a radar track. And the other thing we can say as well, look at the size of the missile. Absolutely tiny missile, just like the Rapier. It probably does not have, I haven't researched this, but it probably does not have a proximity fuse. It's probably a contact crush fuse. Because Sackloss is so accurate, it can actually hit me with this missile. Obviously, as you know, most, almost all air-to-air -air missiles do not actually hit an aeroplane. They go in the vicinity of an aircraft, and then a, magne uh, a magnetic proximity fuse detects that and explodes and just kind of nukes the area with frag. But this is more likely to be a tiny kind of one kilo or maybe two kilo uh, crush fuse warhead. It'll actually explode inside my um, F-15 like a fast-moving hand grenade. And we're probably about to see that, so... Bump. And you see, it's actually hit. So it's not actually blown my plane apart because it's a tiny little frag grenade. It won't play, blow my plane apart. What it will do is fill my uh, plane the inside, my plane from the inside out, tiny little ribbons. And obviously, as you can see, I'm dead. So it's done the job very nicely. So to summarise, that is showing you that SA-19. In DCS, will only fire its missiles with sack loss. It will not radar guide them. Again, in real life, maybe it's a different story. You tell me. I think DCS, from what I found, is actually very accurate and usually gets this stuff right. The only th uh, additional thing to say is if I got within about a mile, it will use its cannon. And for the cannon, it will use radar guided. Obviously, you know, uh, a cannon without radar guidance is pretty much useless. Well, you know, within reason, uh, a radar guided cannon is very useful. And at that point, there's no point of hiding its track at that point because it's shooting great big traces at you anyway. So um, it will use the radar track for that. Okay, so I've got nothing else to say about that. Hopefully that settles the argument once and for all because it's getting a little bit silly at this point. Actually, scratch that. I've just thought of something else. I, I bet someone comes back and says, but Cap, I can fly my F-15. I can put it in TWS mode and then I can shoot my AMRAMs at people without a track. You know, there with a, um, we're firing my AMRAMs in TWS mode. It doesn't give the hostiles a track, a uh, track. And that's absolutely right. Uh, the, the way a track wall scan works is that it uses the search radar to update a live track file on an old 086 or 186 process or something like that in the uh, in the aircraft and it maintains a track file of an aircraft at 0.5 hertz whatever you've got your refresh rate of the search radar out but let's be absolutely clear about this you cannot hit a uh, hostile with a missile with track while scan. The way a track while scan works is you fire your missile and the track while scan will guide it roughly to within a couple of miles, a few miles of that aircraft, at which point that missile will turn on its own radar and get a track. So, to summarize, you cannot use a track while scan type of lock to guide in a missile to impact. But um, on the back of that, I'd like to tag on. Uh, we've started doing ships now, as you know, looking at ships, and we've started to get quite good at doing this actually. It's, um, we've started to put some quite good videos out, and I want to start going back to the S, uh, SA series, the different SAMs that are in DCS World, and doing kind of hour long videos on each one. Um, and But we need some operators to come and help me. So with the ships, I've got actual people who've served on the ships, frigates, cruisers, um, stuff like that. And so what I'd like to try and find is if there's such a thing as sociable people that have operated these things, you know, people who want to come and talk about the SA-19 Tunga. So maybe it's not possible. Maybe it's all too hush-hush. Maybe that's why it's not allowed to. Mm, that might be true. But if there are crews out there that want to come and help and talk about these things, and just, you know, I'm not looking for secrets about them, just the basic specs about them, you know, what it was like to drive them about and stuff like that. So let me know if you have any interest in that. And, uh, and we'll start putting stuff together. I think that'd be jolly good fun. Other than that, I hope you enjoyed that, everyone. And I shall see you later.